Well, I, 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 I don't, I don't really, I don't really have a, a favorite, uh, but it's always my last album because I think the last album that, uh, that, uh, you know, it, it's the most current album in the current lineup, and I think that you know when you are. Um, when you are, uh, let's say, um, evolving as a musician, you you gain more knowledge about your instrument. You gain a little bit more knowledge about the construction of songs and how stuff works. So, I think this uh, Exitium is my best uh, best work to date. And um, we're already currently working on our, uh, our newest album, which will <clears throat> be released in twenty four. So we have a little uh, little time uh, to to go, uh, and it will be. Again, it will be mind blowing because uh, I like to set the standard high, and um, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. At what stage is the songwriting process right now? Uh, well, the the process of writing is still it's still the same. I'm the main writer in the band, and uh, obviously there, are, um, um, you know, the guys in my band uh, they are talented enough to to bring forth their material. But I I'd like to keep it as clean as possible um since i'm the guy that came up with the pestilence style i don't mm -hmm. want to go too far away from that but um you know our drummer is <laughs> yeah he's very talented and he's a drum teacher as well so uh i i might involve him a little bit more in the uh basics of how the construction of the song is going to be like uh because it's going to be a little bit more intricate than the last albums so it's going to be uh yeah, it's going. It's going to be a, a a huge task for me and him to uh, set the standard really high this time, I, I, and not putting the emphasis on on um, what's happening right now, which I think is it's it's a bad thing. Is uh, that when the kids now they are using technique in order to become faster, uh, and I'm not talking like technique in playing, but technique in um, using technology. Uh, and without that technology, they, they will not be able to do what they do now. So uh, we like to keep it as true and as, um, yeah, just true to the, to, to the style and to our um, creative essence of, you know, being a musician. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a true metal ad spirit, I think. Like any, anything else is... Ah. <laughs> well, you know, sure. there are bands. There are bands nowadays that go uh, way over uh, uh, 300 BPM, and uh, yeah. uh, you can hear it's humanly not possible. So they've used technology in order to achieve that. And the the problem is when you start to believe in yourself that you are doing this. Uh, I think you you you're on the wrong path. So for us, it's very important that the music uh, is 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 still dynamic and organic. And we don't have to prove ourselves that we can play really fast, but because most of the like the the best for me, the best songs are uh, more comprehensible, and it's not just like you you're doing a, you're doing something to impress a fellow drummer or or something like that. A song has to be, you know, uh, very consistently in in what you're trying to give as the message. So if the message that you want it to be really really fast all the time. Uh, yeah, I guess that's if that's your thing. But we we try to get the dynamic, get those morbid melodies going, and uh, you know get that feeling going. That you know when you put the album on, um, it it will take you on a journey, and uh, it's like like almost like movie scapes, like like uh, you know like uh, movie music, mm -hmm. soundtracks. Yeah, right. Yeah, movie soundtracks. Yeah, you know I I think this uh, lineup sounds really great. Do you think this is the the best lineup that you have? You yeah, I, I definitely. Yeah, I I definitely think this is my best lineup because um, if, if this is the first time that I could let go, uh, more uh, of trying to be in control of the situation, where with these guys, um, not only uh, I I I feel more related uh, to musically, but uh, they've shown to be uh, great friends. Uh, we can have really great conversations and, we, and we're all on the same level. So um, we, we, we're not in it, you know, to, to party or something like this, you know. It's not like none of the guys are drinkers. I, I mean, I don't drink, I don't smoke. We're pretty straight edge uh, uh, this way. So it's never going to be a problem like what we had in the past uh, a few times where it's been alcohol abuse and stuff like that. You know, I, 
I just want to be a musician. And I think that this lineup is, you know, has made me become a better musician as well. And, you know, we are very much um, locked into each other uh, musically. So uh, you can expect for the, from the new Pestilence album that is going to be even more uh, a step up from Exitium, which I think was already uh, another milestone for, yeah. for us, I guess. Um, yeah. I, I do understand the problem with um, with what, you know, and I, I tend to have the same feeling sometimes is that uh, metalheads, they have a hard time um, going and l listening to um, stuff that is outside their um, their box. And meaning, let's say you grow up with Testimony, that will be your best album when you grow up. And this is when you heard that album. This is going to be the best Pestilence album. Now you have the younger kids that grew up with maybe Resurrection or uh, or, or maybe Hey Dion um, that will have a much more of an emphasis. For me, when I grew up, uh, I listened to, um, let's say, I listened to um, Hello Waits. Mm -hmm. that, then Hello Waits is for me much more uh, uh, intriguing uh, than, for example, their, their later stuff because I grew up on that music. So... We are actually we are kind of caged in our own um, generation group. You know, when, when you grow up, the stuff that you did back then uh, give will give you fond feelings, and uh, and 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 this is something that sometimes you have to break out of in order to be more open to listening to other albums from from that band, for example. You know, so for me, it's like very difficult to. Uh, since I know I know what it is to play with this lineup with these musicians and playing songs like uh, that on the Exidium album that that will give me way more pleasure than for me playing out of the body for the ten thousandth time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so now what we're doing now is that with the creativity and the and 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 the guys' uh, talent, uh, we upgrade the songs and we give it a little bit uh, of a different. Um, um, I guess a different flavor to make sure that it will also for us um, will stay um, like, like something that you would want to perform, you know, and, and it's more like, okay, what's going, what's going to happen is like, uh, it's not going to sound exactly like the album because then you just have to put the CAD on, but we will always try to challenge each other and make the song better. So you will see some, some differences, <clears throat> but most of the song will, of, of course, will be the same. But uh, we played with different intention. And, and, and yeah, I guess with different intention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To keep there it energetic actually, for ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So there was actually, by the way, as a side note, there was actually a, a study published, a neurological uh, medicine study. Which said uh, you can only discover new music till you are thirty. <laughs> Same kind of the gates close of your brain, kind of, and you are stuck on. Well, that. yeah. I also, but the thing also is, uh, since since uh, time is going faster, faster all the time, um, the um, um, the the music that is being put out uh, and all the channels that you can you know you can get all these uh, this information is very overwhelming. Uh, so you get all these new um, bands with like you know with new influences, but. For, for us, it's like a lot of these youngsters don't even know where death metal came from and where it originated because it's not yeah. it's not in their time frame. Right. So yeah. and I came from a time frame where where uh, where the Florida death metal um, was blooming, you know, mm -hmm. and you get all these amazing bands uh, and some are some of them are still, you know, active. Um, but when it was created, uh, created uh, back then, it, it's, it's just something that was very special. And now when you when you mention it, I sound like a grandpa. Remember back in the days and <laughs> stuff like that. But I that's, feel like one. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mentioned your first albums because that was my entry point to pestilence. Of course, I listened to the new stuff also, but that is my ancient memory as a kid, you know. And of course, one always treasures that. And he had actually a huge influence on my, not childhood, but in my teen years. Let's say it like that. Like out of my body, I don't know how many times I listened to it. So you don't have to play it live and listen to me and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually, yeah. actually, what you're saying is exactly what I was mentioning before. It's like what, what, the stuff that you grew up on, or uh, as a teenager or as a youngster, that's gonna stick in your head for the rest of your life, and that's that's yeah. probably the most important. And you know, not just pestles, but other bands uh, around that time frame 
uh, will have a, a, a bigger impact on you than the you know the the new the the death core or whatever is mm -hmm. out there at this moment. <clears throat> yeah, you know we are just very very excited about this tour, this Latin American tour, um, playing testimony. Mm, all all the people like my age, you know, I'm 46. Um, the people wants to go with the, the kids, the kids also, and all uh, love this. For us, it's a big band, you know, it's a big a old school band. And the last time I saw Pestilence, well, I, I live in Argentina, but I I I went into Europe 2019, <clears throat> and it was a, a most at your home in Dokum uh, Open Air, and that show blew my mind, man. Well. Awesome. Well, what, what I can what I can remember from that show is that it was so hot on oh, yeah. stage that it, it, it was uh, it was just like, you know, holding your guitar um, right before the show started. The, the the neck was because it's my guitar was graphite. The neck yeah. It's so hot. It's barely able to touch it. And my, my amp was almost overloading because it's just like too it's too hot. So I remember this this uh, this specific uh, show. Uh, but we we managed. We we did our best, and um, there was a good crowd. So we were really happy with uh, with how it turned out. Definitely, cost yeah. lots of discipline, I can imagine, <laughs> working in that heat. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I don't know how Argentina is going to be like. Uh, probably it's going to be a, a little bit uh, milder than uh, because it's like uh, what is it in uh, April or May? So it's not yeah. it's not going to be super hot. Uh, but you know, um, I, I've always. <clears throat> grown very fond of uh, being in, in in Latin America because I feel that in Europe, uh, especially some countries, um, you know, the people there, the fans are uh, kind of spoiled because they get to see all these bands. And um, I have a more of a genuine feel when I, I uh, when I go to um, Latin America, because These guys, they just live for the music. It's it's it is hey, in I their hearts. Hard, <laughs> it's in their heart, and the, and that 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 just warms me because I know their feeling is really really genuine and not like okay, I'm gonna next week I'm gonna see this band next week this band. No, they they actually really live up and they save money to go to the show and they live up to this really to go to the show and to this moment, you know, and that makes me really really happy because. Uh, that's what it's all about. It's like, you know, engaging with the crowd and, uh, you know, just like uh, take it a step further and, uh, you know, showing the love and feeling the love right back. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and talking, talking about uh, touring, uh, one thing I, that I, I really appreciate and respect about your, your values because of the, of the vaccine, for example, is, 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 a, is, is, is a, like an issue for you. It's a special issue. Well, well, yeah, but you you know how, how I feel about it because I post uh, uh, on social media all the time about what I feel about mm -hmm. uh, what has been uh, done to humanity and how we are being tricked into certain stuff that is just not humane. So uh, I think that, and also what happened uh, within the metal community, it, it has been politicized a lot, uh, even... I mean, I remember back in the days, um, you know, having long hair, um, just the way you dress, uh, you were outside society because you had your own set of values and your own minds and set. And now it's almost like, you know, it's more politics. You have to watch out what you say in order to not be, uh, you know, expelled from a certain group or whatever. But, you know, for me, I've always spoken the truth the from my heart. And sometimes uh, it backlashes to me, but you know, I I have my own set of values, and I really think it's very important to keep using your own brain and and not just going and doing something that you know the you know whatever um, society or whatever tells you to do in order to fit into inside a, of a group. And and I think a vaccination is a really bad thing because. Now you see all these guys and all these people dying and uh, they, they don't know how, how this is. How come? Mm -hmm. How come? Well, I know wh why this comes and I've tried to warn everybody for this as well. And, you know, losing people, losing friends uh, and, and trying to, you know, warn these guys and they didn't listen because they wanted to go on vacation. You know, you can't blackmail me. 
You know, I'm, I'm Patrick Mamelli. I can't be blackmailed. I always do my own thing. I always take my own course, whether it's whether if it's um, my mind, my sanity, my band, uh, my thoughts, everything is for me is always very calculated. So I'm and now I'm trying to s stay a little bit away from it. And 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 hopefully because I had to turn down the tour uh, for the U.S. because you had to get vaccinated, you know. Yeah. I'm not going to get vaccinated in order to go to America to do a tour. And after that, I'll come back and I'll have some ad adverse reactions and I might be able not never to play again. So yep. for me, the, the risks are are really, really high. So I'd rather say, well, I'm not going to do this. And I think um, I'm happy that this Latin America tour is 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 happening. And if it has to be um, with uh, tests, I'll take a test uh, as, as long as I'm not going to have, uh, you know, the vaccine which I'm very strong against. So um, hopefully uh, there will be no, you know, there will be no, no uh, other thing, obstacle, obstacles coming our way prior to the tour. But as far as I know and am concerned, uh, everything is happening according to plan. Yeah. Yeah. And all the guys on the band uh, think the same as you. Good. Great. Well, yeah, well, that, uh, so, some of them, Um, some of them were did get like a, like one boost, no one shot, and never got the boosters because they feel it's like especially in in the Netherlands. I only can speak about the Netherlands is that then you have to get another one, and in three months time you have to get another one. So there there will be never an end date really? to this to this nonsense. So um, yeah, I'm I'm not vaccinated, and I I hope my my fellow uh, pestilence members. Will will stay, um, you know, stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, well, personally, I'm three times vaccinated, and now I don't care anymore because <laughs> now it's gone. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Because you know what? What now? What, what are you going to do now? Then you have to get a booster, and uh, and you hear all these, uh, you hear all these, uh, all these things uh, that are floating around on on Telegram, which I think is one of the only. Uh, uh, media outlets that are, you know, willing to also give the alternative um, um, news is where Bill Gates has said that not to worry about the guys that are hesitant. Uh, they're going to put it in the food. So we're going to get it in our system anyway. So that is for me another thing like, okay, these people are not trustworthy. So I, I, then if, if I'm not able to fly anymore or do shows, I won't do shows anymore. This is how I think um, that my body is uh, is my temple, and and I own my body. So nobody's going to touch it uh, with something that I'm not aware of what they're putting in there and stuff like that. So good for you that you that you stop taking it now. It's good. Well, it's I would take it again if it would be necessary. I have a different point of view, but I agree with you. Said uh, said you have to stand up for your own opinion. That's the most important thing, you know. Like personally, I have often different opinions to to many people, but I'm not the one to tell them how to live, you know. Just as we metalheads prefer to live our way, uh, I I see it as a border that I don't tell others how they have to live. It's simple as that, you know. And I think COVID is the subject is gone anyhow. Uh, I don't think many countries apply you with the vaccination still. No, how is it in Argentina, Fede? Oh, I think now the people are getting like the the, the fifth shot or something like that. <laughs> But no, nobody cares, really. You know, no, nobody. Uh, can you travel without vaccine? Can you travel without trouble? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, here inside the country, and uh, also with uh, the rest of the countries in Latin America, at least, there's no problem. Just ask you if you are vaccine. That's all. If you are okay, if you are not, it's okay anyway. So it's not a problem to to travel in Latin America, in South America, at least. Most important part was uh, the tour in Latin America. Are you are you politically interested or active actually also when you are so engaged in, in different subjects? No, not necessarily. Uh, I, especially, I mean, I have my own views about certain stuff, but uh, as far as Pestilence goes, I, we're not a political band, so I, I'd rather not like uh, discuss politics because it really doesn't it really doesn't matter because I'm not a, like a high ranked person that can actually. Uh, make a difference. So, uh, you know, in, in a certain way, um, uh, democracy is just a word, you know, it's, it, it, there is no democracy. So 
Uh, and there have been many studies about what democracy is. And But I think that we, we are living in a society that are bound by rules. And some countries, uh, they obey by different rules and some are, are tighter and some, you know, some they have the death sentence and, and some people, uh, you know, that are like, for example, pedophiles, they get only two or three years and they're back on the street. So uh, politics is just talking. It's, for me, it's all BS. Uh, I, I know my set of values and um, that's what I'm, I'm going to buy to by my own my own rules in but not you know trying to put that out there and everybody's free to do whatever they want to do right but I want to speak the language of music and music is you know that's my life um, and, and that's my talent so I'd rather stick to that um, and keep my my political views um, yeah to myself. Okay, so no, nothing to say about your Argentinian queen. <laughs> well, yeah, I have my, I have my, I have my opinion about that one as well. You know, <laughs> yeah. Ar Argentinian queen. <laughs> nice, good one. Good one. What inspires you to write your song then? What is your main inspiration? Where do you draw the energy and the creativity from? Um, that's a very good question. I don't think that that many people really do understand how 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 this um how this goes how it works some people say it's like um there's this oh, uh, yeah let's say let's say this is this whole uh, whole dimension where it all the music is in and sometimes you can channel yourself into that dimension and then you you can receive uh some parts and then that's your inspiration um Sometimes I will have a melody or sometimes I will have, um, since I write the lyrics as well, I, I have a word or a sentence where I will build around my whole song. Um, mm -hmm. But where it actually originates from, um, I, I really have no idea. Is it channeling into that dimension where I get the information from or, or is it something else? I don't think that many people that can really actually explain Like, okay, I, I've watched a horror movie and then I want to write something about death or something like this, you know? I mean, for me, that is, um, I mean, that is just too too easy to, to mention this as being, you know, maybe you were watching the movie and in the background there was some melody going on and subconsciously, you, you, you know, you took that melody and you kind of worked on it yourself. I mean, it can be pretty much everything. For me, I've never really listen to um like after consuming listen to to death metal or music in general because uh, i find it very distracting so what i do is i usually get my get my inspiration or get my channeling from moments where uh, i'm not distracted from anything uh, let's say if i would i would be let's say i would be walking and i i would hear the wind because i like to um i like to walk um Uh, in the woods, you know, where it's like more secluded than where nobody's there, where, where I can be, let's say, by myself. Or I, I'm, I'm with my girlfriend and my dog, and then we would just walk. It could be the beach as well in the evening where there's nobody there. You can hear the waves. And then for me, inspiration comes easier because I can't get distracted. That's why mm -hmm. I don't listen to, to metal music that much because I'm scared to get all these influences and it will not sound like pestles anymore. So I'm kind of detaching myself from that, that thing. Right. 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 Okay. Wow. And why did you decide to play this album in particular in Latin America? Well, because it's uh, been the 30th uh, anniversary, you know, uh, it's because of, uh, because of this, uh, the restrictions and, 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 uh, and, and the, the and COVID and stuff like that. We were not be able to to tour, um, you know, prior to you know, and actually do it on the 30th anniversary. We had to kind of, you know, postpone it and postpone it a little bit. But um, um, I think this is now a good time to, and you know, and and for most of the people, uh, this is the, their favorite album. Uh, there's a there's like a a, a camp, uh, like one camp is is more the consuming type of people. Yeah. Uh, with Mar with Martin Van Druen on vocals, and then you have these. This, these fans that are on the other camp and they love um, testimony and my vocals. So, um, yeah, as you know, since I'm the singer in the band, you know, we're, we're focusing on that album because 
uh, this was actually the for us the 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 gate the gateway the most successful album uh, in this time frame um, was Testimony of the Ancients and um, uh, we still love this album uh, very much because yeah it has more of a sentimental value uh, as well to us uh, mm. not just like the you know whatever the fame because Roadrunner still owes me thirty years of royalties so I don't know. <laughs> oh really? Is it uh, all yeah. major runs? Yeah, yeah. I think that they, you know, when when they uh, when they, I think it was bankruptcy or they they now they are Warner Music. Uh, I'm not sure how how that works, uh, but they were in touch with me uh, before, and um, um, <clears throat> seems to be really really difficult to give me a number. First, it was uh, they owed me uh, seven thousand dollars, and then it was seventy thousand, and it might be higher. I don't know. And and now I can't get a hold of anybody. So uh, we're, we're not doing it for the fame or whatever. But, you know, I might I might look into have my lawyer look into it uh, on a on, and when I'm when I'm done with it, something like this. You know, I think I mm -hmm. still have a few years to go um, with my inspiration. As soon as I am starting to rehash myself a lot. Uh, and I can't come up with new ideas. Uh, I think then it's time to call it quits. And I, 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 I've, I've done it before. Uh, I, I, I quit two times before, uh, but it always had to do with uh, record label, uh, record label stuff. You know, situation with the record label. So this time um, we are um, on Agonia Records. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I think the. You know the relationship with them is really really good. Uh, they also are re-releasing the first uh, the first four albums um, with lots of nice uh, merchandise. They have um, remastered it. I think by the same guy that is. Uh, um, let me think. What's that biggest Polish band? That black metal Behemoth? band. What's the name again? Behemoth. Behemoth. Yeah, Behemoth. It's the same guy that did, that did the behemoth mastering. So, um, yeah, I, I, and I think it sounds it sounds really good, and it's different from from you know the original. I think it has more dynamic. It's, it, it's even more powerful. So, fans might enjoy that one as well. So, um, looking forward to that uh, that one as well, and um, yeah, trying to focus on on uh, the the upcoming uh, Latin America tour, which is going to be, I guess, such a blast. I'm really looking forward to you know meeting all these uh, people again, uh, and and um, you know I, I have such fun feelings of uh, of some of those um, shows that we've done you know and um, Argentina was one of them. Uh, Colombia was was uh, awesome, and Chile, um, hmm. yeah, Costa Rica. You know uh, yeah. it's going to be a blast, definitely. Yeah, Chile. Yeah. Chile loves uh, the extreme music. Yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And we are very anxious about you. Uh, you and I know the the boys love to play that album in particular. Isn't it? You gonna play? Yeah. Well, well. Oh, you mean the guys in the band? In the band, yeah. Oh no, they they. I think that that they love uh, Exitium the most because <laughs> they they they're yeah. involved in that album. Yeah. Um, but they also like uh, some of the songs from uh, Obsideo, which I think it was one of our most brutal albums. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, because mm -hmm. it ha has a lot of blast in it, and and also, hey, yeah. Dion had, had some of the songs were really really good, and uh, that we are still you know playing. We're playing some of the songs, um, not just um, you know our main our main um, uh, view now is uh, we want to play all the songs from uh, from the testimony album, yeah. and then we're gonna do a mix of uh, some of the earlier work, but also stuff from Doctrine. Uh, from Hey Dion, from you know, we're, we're gonna try to to play uh, as much of the golden oldies as possible. So we're gonna play some of the uh, consuming stuff as well. So uh, it's not just testimony, but the emphasis will be on testimony for sure. Yeah, we Ooh, we, we need like two two shows to to see all your music. You know that album and and the old stuff and the new stuff also. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, we got. It's going to be a very nice party, and everybody's gonna go home uh, with a happy face. Uh, let me assure you that because we're we are all about positivity, and um, 
you know, was, uh, those days where, um, you know, uh, you had to look evil and mean and stuff. Now I, I'm, I'm much happier when I see happy faces. So that's what we're <laughs> aiming for. <laughs> Smiling corpse paint black metal. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, also, also the, the crowd, I mean, uh, we can see you in your face when you're playing. Like you're uh, enjoying more and more, you know, as, as the years go yes. by. Yes, definitely. And it also has to do with this lineup as well. Mm. Um, and um, I think once you get older, um, you, you see stuff more clear instead of being focused on one little point, you know. And and um, I think it's more uh, of now, instead of taking, it's more giving, you know. Yeah. And, and also, I think that the crowd, you know, um, and th this is what I also love about the Pestilence fans is that... Um, I'm 54, and you say you're 46. Yep. We have matured um, as people, and so now uh, you you are enjoying the, the music and the show more because uh, of of the different values that you've gained uh, throughout your throughout your life, and you know what is important, uh, and and it's more important now to to have a good time when you experience the music uh, in a different way. When you're absorbing the music better now because you have matured as a person, I I feel for me is um, I can enjoy music now better because I have a better understanding about the music. So and I'm and I always want to let's see when the band is playing when they're not doing their routine, but when they're when something happens really like like spontaneously, then it's it it, it just, those these little things make make magic for real. Hmm. Yeah, true. Right. It must be very hard to select the right songs for a live show. I can imagine there's lots of discussion going on there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, that's why I'm happy that it's the emphasis is on Testimony of the Ancients, that we're playing all these songs. So that's a given, you know. Uh, it's not going <laughs> to change or anything. And then it's just up to us um, uh, where we feel. Because um, a lot of people that they think is that when, when they hear uh, one of uh, my songs, that it's like, That it's easy and simple, but once you once you are in get into it, and I, I've had this, um, you know, happen to me a, a couple of times when guitar players come to me, and then I explain how the song goes. They 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 don't they don't realize that that it's it's pretty intricate, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And and also the, another thing is is that you know when I play and when I sing, um, uh, most of the time I uh, sing in a different rit a rhythmical manner than the way I play my guitars. It's really difficult, actually, to to do to do this, and it it takes a lot of practice to to you know practice makes perfect, but to get those two rhythm uh, rhythms together, and uh, yeah, so I'm I'm very excited to to show that to the people you know that we are with this lineup, that we can you know bring you know back you know the more dynamic uh, within within these old songs as well. Looking forward to see it, to see a live play. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, you you Definitely. must to come here, Michael. You must to come here to see these guys. I will. I will most likely. Maybe we book actually next week flights. That could happen. So we will oh. see. Well, come to Jordan. Different yeah. subject. I come for you to South America, from Europe. How crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Right. What song works actually best live? What pushes the guys on in the pit? Well, um, it, it has to be the newer songs. Um, um, I think, uh, for example, Deificus or uh, Morbus Propagationem, those are the songs. And Morbus is like the first song on the album, uh, which uh, has such a intensity and uh, such a brutal, and it has it has nice little blast parts in it. It's just like, wow, you know. And also, um, yeah, uh, you know, some of the some of the older songs, uh, uh, let's say, Secrecy is a Horror. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, and, and of course, uh, Twisted Truth is one of those mm -hmm. songs that, you know, you just have to play and you see the crowd's reaction. Um, um, yeah, yeah. You know, Necromorph is one of my fave songs uh, to play live uh, because it's a little bit more intricate to play. It has different ryth rhythmical parts. And I'm so happy with my drummer because he's able to do all that stuff and mm -hmm. even more. So that's <laughs> going to be just a blast. <laughs> he's right. like a machine, man. <laughs> oh, definitely, man. This guy is crazy. He's such, a, and and he's um, he plays it so effortless. You know, I, I'm like, 
dude, are you a robot? Because it's just like incredible what this guy is doing. <laughs> wow, great. Yeah. How, how did he join in? Um, it's just like, of course, we, we knew each other be before. Uh, and um, But I knew he was uh, playing for uh, Karach Achren. You know this band? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So he was doing drums for that and he's blasting. And um, I, but I, I, I always told the man, I, I said, well, dude, makeup is for women. So I don't know about that. You know, <laughs> he's like, uh, whatever, this and that. So, you know, we started talking and uh, he knew I was uh, in need of a drummer. And at first it was like, um, you know, his main band was Karach. And then later on, uh, it, you know, now his main band is Pestilence. So I'm very happy with, with the way. And so, and I feel it's, um, yeah, it feels so comfortable working with him because I know he's a he's a he's a drum teacher, so I, we can speak the language of music. And um, I studied, I think I studied drums for three years, so we we also speak the drum language. So, and I think it's very important that um, that you know the rhythm section mm -hmm. uh, is in not only in sync with the bass player, but uh, you know that a drummer is. I mean, you can have really good singer or really good guitar player, but if your drummer sucks, you can forget about your whole band. So yeah. the, the drummer is the most important part because it's the rhythm, rhythm section. So the drummer is the most important part. So, and I feel, and I, and he understands that I know and I feel towards that, that it's, he's very important uh, for pestilence. And he really appreciates that. So that we have a mutual understanding and we're, you know, we're a good friend. So we, we have, we can talk about pretty much everything, but when it comes down to making music for Pestilence, uh, we're on the same uh, page. We're on the same level, same flow. That's really good. Yeah. So in other words, you wouldn't hire Lars Ulrich. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This guy, I don't know, man. Yeah, and people. I mean, people do make fun of him, and um, uh, but you know, he he's a rich, he's a rich, worst drummer. So <laughs> tell me, you know, tell me what he must be doing something right, you know. Um, he can't keep a beat, but you know, he's got a big bank account. So, um, yeah. He, he, yeah, but you know, he, he's getting older. You see, he's, he's having more fun now as well. So people loosen up. Uh, when they get older, I think they loosen up, loosen up or even tighten up more. And then you become this old grumpy guy and you don't want to, you don't want to do that. You want to just like be positive and, uh, you know, get the metal flowing, I guess. <laughs> right. Good, good. Okay. Peter, well, anything uh, else? Yeah. Um, what is that you're doing, Patrick? Because you are uh, working uh, on your gym are working, uh, writing songs, producing your own uh, record label. Yes. And, and also you, you can go to, with, with your dog outside. You do a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know what it's called? It's called uh, time management. It's mm -hmm. like when you when you know uh, you're going, uh, for example, uh, now I am um, like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm producing, I'm doing stuff. So Look, I'm I'm at my at my studio and I'm making music, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So wow. uh, yeah. So uh, this is what I'm doing now, and I'm working on uh, uh, some projects. I'm also working on the best of album, which is going to be called Levels of Perception, uh, which is like uh, you know uh, you know some of the songs that we really dig, we put in uh, like a new album, and this is like uh, the runner up to the n next Pestilence album. Uh, coming out in 24 so this year we'll have a best of album um so i'm working on that so but it's all has to do with time management so i don't i don't like to pardon my words fuck around uh, i'd rather be um productive so if i feel like okay i i can't do nothing more on this uh project or this this moment this is my top whatever I just stop and I'll start doing something else, you know, whether it's um, walking with my dog or going to the gym, um, trying to, uh, you know, try to stay healthy and, uh, you know, get, a, get enough rest. Uh, but I, can, I, I like to keep, keep on moving and I, I, I like to be, uh, you know, especially with my music, be creative. So whenever I have the time for myself is when, when, when I'm in the gym. The rest is just time management, you know, trying to get stuff done. 
uh, and it, it worked. I mean, it works for me. You know, I, I think I, I need like six or seven hours of sleep uh, and I also work at my gym. So I have a regular job as well doing that. But in the meantime, I'm doing interviews. I'm writing stuff, you know, at my work. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, keep myself busy as well. Yeah. So wow. we, we can, we can say that. Time to rest. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, um, we can say that you are happy right now these days. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Ve I'm. I'm a very happy guy because uh, everything falls into place. I don't have to worry about my record label. Uh, I have my own label. Um, I'm working on my own projects. Um, uh, stuff that I don't have influence over sometimes worries me, right? But I like to, you know, expel that from my from my life is worrying too much about stuff. So I'd like to uh, live from day to day calculated you know I, i don't like to worry too much about the future because it's most of the time um uh, you don't have a grip on on this you know what what can happen to you in six months i mean something can happen right so uh you know you can just you know you get in an accident you can do this and that that but you just have to live your life in the now in, in this moment you know and i'm and i'm enjoying this interview at, at this moment but as soon as i'm done i'm right back into the music And then, uh, you know, it's 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 just like keeping myself uh, uh, busy and, and, you know, being and but also uh, being blessed um, with my health uh, at my age, understanding the fact that it has to do with my own actions, because every mm -hmm. action has a reaction. So I know uh, since I'm di diabetic as well, type one, so I have to shoot mm -hmm. insulin. Um, I'm, I'm more much more focused on my food intake. I'm much more focused on my on my well-being, on my uh, you know physical well-being. Uh, get enough rest, uh, you know, and but not to worry too much about you know stuff that can happen in in the future. So, you know, just just being passionate about what you do is very is very important. But make sure that what you're doing is not useless, because when it's useless, it, it's just. Because this time, I guess that's my philosoph philosophical thought of the, the the day. This time you cannot get back. When you when you lose time is and and you, and you don't do something in the meantime, that time is not coming back to you. You know, and we are getting older as we progress uh, faster and faster in time. So you have to make it count. You have to make count right now what you're doing. Everything that you do will have reactions. So make it count. Right. Good. Nice. Well said. Nice. Yeah. It's a great final press. Definitely, Thank right? It's a great yeah. closing yeah, yeah. speech. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for the interview. It was a real. Well, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I hope to see you uh, from Europe going to Latin America and uh, see one of our shows or maybe, uh, you know, hang out and then uh, we can dis uh, discuss whatever you want to discuss. Uh, um, uh, uh, but then again, um, if you can't make it, No problem, you know, life is what it is, <laughs> but I'm sure, but let me assure you, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be in Argentina, going to have lots of fun and meeting lots of people. Great, man. Okay. We really Enjoy appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you so much. You, I, I see you soon, just in, in less than three months, man. It's, it's, and three months is over before you know it. Yeah. Time flies. Yeah, so... We will receive you here. Sure. Man. Thank you so much. Definitely. Take care, man. You too, man. Thanks. Bye-bye.